Good morning. Welcome back to our Summer Faith Formation series, Paul's Supporting Cast. You can find previous sessions of this series on our YouTube page. The idea behind this series is that the Apostle Paul is one of the most important people in the history of Christianity. But Paul didn't do everything alone. He had the help and support of many people, most of whom are mentioned in Scripture only in passing. My hope is that this series is a sort of starting point for us to think about our own place in the larger Christian story. Today is our final session together exploring this supporting cast, although there certainly are many more men and women to discover. Today I want to discuss Linus and Clement. In terms of background, it would be hard to find somebody with less information than Linus. We have a single verse that mentions him. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 21, the author writes, Do your best to come before winter. Eubulus sends greetings to you, as do Pudens and Linus and Claudia and all the brothers and sisters. Notice that I said, the author writes. That's because it's still a very open debate whether or not Paul actually wrote this letter or if it's a later writing. But either way, at some point, somebody named Linus became associated with Paul as somebody near him near the end of his life. Likewise, Clement gets one verse this time from Paul's letter to the Philippians. In chapter 4, verse 3, Paul writes, Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled besides me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. These two men might have simply passed into obscurity, but for later Christian historians. According to Christians in the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries, Linus and Clement both became leaders of the church. This tradition tells us that Peter passed his mantle on to Linus, who eventually passed it on to Clement. And in this way, the work and the words of the apostles began their march through time and space. Linus left no writings behind, but Clement did. His letter to the Corinthians is the earliest Christian document outside of the New Testament, and in it he supports this idea. Clement writes to reassure the congregation that the church's work is God's work. He wrote, the apostles received the gospel for us from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ was sent from God. In other words, Jesus has begun a string of followers that passes on the good news. This doesn't mean that we always get it right. History has certainly been a witness to this. But it means that Jesus' promise still stands. We received the good news from somebody before us, and we will pass it on to people after us. This session is a fitting conclusion to our series, because Clement also tells us of the end of Paul's life. He wrote, Paul was a herald in both East and West. He gained the noble fame of his faith, he taught God's righteousness to all the world. And when he had reached the limits of the West, he gave his testimony before rulers, and thus passed from the world and was taken up into the holy place, the greatest example of endurance. And this is where, while I don't disagree with Clement, I want to expand on his words. Paul did all these things. He is a great example. But Paul's endurance has been matched by Christians who have toiled in obscurity and who toil still. Paul's testimony was the testimony of Tertius, 
and Phoebe, and Prisca, and Aquila, and Onesimus, and Andronicus, and Junia, and Erastus, and Rufus, and Linus, and Clement, and is now ours as well. To close this series, I wish to remind you that the baton has been passed. We talked before about how these people were part of Paul's supporting cast. Now Paul is part of our supporting cast. Thanks be to God. Thank you for being a part of this series. I hope that this has been an interesting look into the people who lived and worked alongside Paul, and a look into who we are and what this means for us. I'm looking forward to our next Adult Forum series together. Let's close in prayer using the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.